healed instantaneously. He proceeded to tell in this live interview how that when he frequented the services later of where this woman preached, his comment was that she literally became the person that she represented. She literally became, as it were, this man called Jesus, and she f caused people to flock to her because of her contact with God. He said in the interview, my reason for success is that I learn something that some actors never learn. He said there are actors, but then there are actors. He said, I am an actor. He said, a real actor becomes the person that they represent. Anthony Quinn said, for that reason, there are some roles offered to me in the theater that I would never undertake to portray or to play because once you have portrayed those characters, the spirit, the spirit of that character will sometimes linger and stay with you for weeks, months, sometimes years. For example, those actors or actresses who played in the movie Exorcist, many of them became taken over by the spirits of darkness and will never be freed, never be freed, unless they come in contact with a child of God who knows this Jesus, this Jesus of Nazareth, and who has the authority to rebuke the spirits and the powers that have attached themselves to innocent lives. The interview as a whole was incredible because out of this interview, I was able to ascertain, to understand something that is powerful. If an actor understands that to be successful, he must of necessity become the person which he is portraying. How much more then should you and I understand as a child of God to be successful, to be a minister, to be a preacher, an evangelist, a missionary, that it behooves us to become as much as we possibly can to become literally this man Jesus, to become like him, to have his attributes, to carry his spirit, to generate his power in this generation, to be able to transmit his love, his glory, his strength, his encouragement, his hope to this lost and dying generation. Herein today we can understand what I would call a touch of revelation. We'll never do it literally by words, We'll never do it literally by acting. We must literally become as close to this man Jesus as we can. We must have as much of his power inside of us as possible. And we must remember that we are his only hands. We are his only feet. We are his only lips in this present world. Angels will not come to our streets. They will not come to our cities. They will not come to our hamlets or our villages. They will not come to share the gospel. They will never tell the good news in our street corners. This tremendous, awesome, overpowering, unbelievable responsibility has fallen into the hands of people like you and people like me. We are the only mouthpiece he has, his only hands, his only feet. We are that representation in this world. God help us, God help us to literally become like Jesus, to follow after him every day, every day, every hour, every night, to live for him as we have never ever lived for him before. And God help us to stop playing all of these foolish, non-essential games. If ever people this world needed to see or hear someone that was just real, someone that was genuine, the world needs to hear and to see someone that is genuine in this hour. The world is tired of plastic. They are tired of synthetics. They've heard all of the business rhetoric and all the salesmanship. But for someone to walk on the scene and simply say, I love you. I can help you. I've got something. Do you know about Jesus? Have you ever heard about what he can do for a broken life? Something begins to happen. Yes, they may mock you and they may make fun, but it's only because they've heard so much and they've seen so much. So many profess, but they do not possess. 
But if you will be diligent, if you will be firm and real with your testimony, suddenly it dawns on the hearer, here is something that is real. Here is something that is genuine. The reason they run you through their test and their little program of interrogation is because they want you to prove to them that what you are saying is real and that what you are saying is genuine. And the moment that they ascertain that it is real, it is genuine, it's not a game, it's not some sham, it's not something plastic, they begin to automatically come across to you because this world is looking for something that is real, something that works, something that is genuine. And once you have proven to them by your living, by your genuineness, by the reality of Jesus in your life, that this thing is the answer to the problems of life. Once they begin to feel that, their soul will open and they are on their way to a conversion that will cause the devil to tremble and to shudder in his very tracks. The thing that hurts the devil more than anything else in this entire world is a soul that suddenly becomes saved, a soul that suddenly begins to walk down to an altar, that walks out of a crowd on a street, that begins to walk toward a man or a woman of God, that suddenly slips through literally the devil's fingers. The devil is helpless to hold you against your own will. He cannot do that. Every time a soul is baptized in Jesus' name, every time a soul receives the baptism of the Holy Ghost, it deals the devil a low blow, so to speak. It hurts him more than anything else in all of the universe for a soul to become literally converted, to become saved, to walk from a world of darkness into this glorious world of light. Tremendous what we have in our hands. Tremendous what you possess in your soul today. But what will you do with it? What will you do with it? Please, please hear me today. Look where you are going because you will inevitably go where you are looking. And I would not want to go where some people are looking. I would not want to become what some people will become in the end of their life. You will become the thing to which you give yourself. So if you give yourself to Jesus, if you give yourself over to Him, if you talk with Him, if you become His friend, it's not enough to know about Him. You need to know Him. You need to know Him in the power of His reality, in the power of His resurrection, in the power of His might. You need to know Him. So if you give yourself to Him, you will become like Him. You will become like Him. It has been understood from all the centuries that have gone by. It has been written, it has been recorded that whenever a man or a woman of God has risen on the scene whose prayers were heard and answered by God, multitudes flock to them. Multitudes have flocked through all the centuries to a man or a woman whose prayers were heard by God. You could be one of those people. Don't be drafted into this. Don't wait for signs, wonders. Don't wait for handwriting on the wall. Why don't you just enlist? Why don't you take yourself today as we enter into this realm of the gifts of the Spirit, as we enter into this realm of the supernatural, why don't you take yourself today and say, Jesus, I will not wait to be drafted. I will enlist. I will enlist in this army. I will give what I am from this moment on, from this time forward. I will take what I am and I will seek you. I will follow after you. I will talk to you. I will lift my soul, my hands, my very being. I enlist all that I have into the service of the King. I promise you today, as a man of God, that if you will enlist and not wait to be drafted, 
the benefits are better. The 